Diabetes Connections is brought to you by One Touch. Every touch is a step forward. By Dexcom, take control of your diabetes and live life to the fullest with Dexcom. By Tandem Diabetes Care, makers of the T-Slim X2 insulin pump. And by Real Good Foods, real food you feel good about eating. This is Diabetes Connections with Stacey Sims. This week, diagnosed with type 1 as a baby, Colt Scott has been a tester for America Ninja Warrior for the last four years. Just recently, he got the call that he made it to the show. He's helping a lot of kids with diabetes will watch. It's not something that I ever expected to walk into, but now that I'm here, if that is what it is, that I am glad to be there. I want to be there for any kid who has ever had doubt to stand up and say that, yes, you can. Colt talks about being a sudden role model. He really just found the diabetes community, and he takes us behind the scenes of American Ninja Warrior. In our Community Connection this week, an update on what's now called the Thrive Medical Alert Necklace and how you can get yours. And tell me something good, a strong drive to succeed. This podcast is not intended as medical advice. If you have those kinds of questions, please contact your health care provider. Welcome to another week of Diabetes Connections. I'm your host, Stacey Sims. So glad to have you along. If you are new to the show, we aim to educate and inspire about type 1 diabetes by sharing stories of connection. My story is that my son, Benny, was diagnosed with type 1 right before he turned 2. That was back in 2006. He is now 14. He's in eighth grade. My husband has type 2 diabetes. I don't have diabetes, but I have a background in broadcasting, and that is how you get the podcast. I'm really excited because in about a week and a half, we're going to be up in Seattle for the Friends for Life conference out there. We live in Charlotte, North Carolina, so we're actually making that part of our trip for our spring break. Really excited to meet some new people and see Seattle. I don't think I've ever actually been in the city. I've flown through but airports don't really count, right? So we'll spend some time out there and I will report back in the weeks to come. Always an adventure whenever you travel. We talked about that just last week when uh, Maura and I were answering questions about traveling with type one. You know, it's always exciting, uh, isn't it? Just to uh, everything you have to schlep, everything you have to do. And something always happens when you travel type one or not. So I will be sure to report back. We're going to jump right in this week and get you to Colt talking about American Ninja Warrior. But first, Diabetes Connections is brought to you by Dexcom. We have been using the Dexcom G6, as you know, since it came out last summer. It really is amazing. The Dexcom G6 is now FDA permitted for no finger sticks for calibration and diabetes treatment decisions. You do that two-hour warm-up and the number just pops up. You know, I'm still getting used to that. If you're, If this is the first CGM you've ever used, it might seem like old hat. But we've been using Dexcom for more than five years, and it just keeps getting better. The G6 has longer sensor wear, now 10 days, and the new sensor applicator is so easy to use. You know, Benny does everything himself these days, and he says no pain at all. Of course, we still love the alerts and alarms. We can set them how we want. And if your glucose alerts and readings from the G6 do not match symptoms or expectations, use a blood glucose meter to make treatment decisions. To learn more, go to diabetes-connections.com and click on the Dexcom logo. My guest this week was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes when he was a baby. He was just 18 months old. Colt Scott is actually about to turn 25. And interestingly, he spent most of his life with diabetes. I mean, he spent all his life with diabetes pretty much. But he has not been part of the diabetes community. Even though, as you'll hear, his training partner also has type 1 they just didn't get out there into conferences or meetups or anything like that. But it turns out the diabetes community found them. You see, Colt is quite amazing in the gym, as you'd have to be to get an American Ninja Warrior. And he put out some videos and that led to people with type 1 asking him questions, finding him, you know, bringing him to conferences. He had appeared on a show called The Ultimate Beast Master a couple of years ago, but Colt's goal was really to get on America Ninja Warrior, and he has done it. I do have to let you know that just after we taped this interview, the timing of his appearance changed. They do these tapings all over the country, and uh, it depends on your region as to when your segment is taped, that sort of thing. 
And uh, Colt had a little bit of an injury. He was supposed to tape next week, but they were, I guess they were gracious enough to change it or the, the timing just really worked out for him in the injury. And it's going to be in April now. Doesn't really mean that when they air it will change because that's always top secret. And he will talk more about how all of that works. Here is my interview with Colt Scott. Colt, thank you so much for joining me. I know this is a really busy time for you. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I'm stoked to be on the show. I've heard so much about it just getting into the diabetes community, and it's been a crazy wild ride since I've gotten the call. <laughs> so let's talk about that. I mean, we'll get to your diagnosis and everything else, but you know, let's jump in. We're having you on pretty much right after you found out you're going to be on the show, but before you're actually competing. So let's just ask about the history of your relationship with American Ninja Warrior. You know, how did it start? That's a good question. So back when I first got into recreational gymnastics in 2007, I was super into comic books and I was not at all who I am today. Mm -hmm. I was just a big nerd and I was like, I want to, yo, be like Spider-Man. So I got into gymnastics and started rock climbing and my coach in gymnastics, Jonathan Wyman, uh, one day after a couple of years came in and he was just stoked about this show, American Ninja Warrior. And at the time, no one had beaten this course. Jeff Britton, Isaac Caldera, those guys hadn't hadn't happened yet and he just came in he's like no one's beating this course you guys you know me and my training partner eli he was like you guys can do it if we just train hard you guys can totally be on that show this is it and so we were both taken back we were like well yeah let's go so from about 2009 2010 we started really training and started incorporating that into the gymnastics uh, routines and then finally by the time i got out of high school that was it nonstop full throttle. We were doing Ninja Warrior or nothing. And since then, we've gotten to know more and more people. We've gotten more and more experience, visited different gyms, gone to different states. And suddenly, here we are. We've talked before and you are a, you have been a course tester. What does that mean? So in each qualifying city and in Vegas, what they'll do is they'll have volunteers come on the show and they can run separate obstacles. They can run full course obstacles. They can get average times. And if you're lucky enough, you can even get GoPro footage for the show. It's a huge honor that a lot of the ninjas try and get to. And it's a way of the show's producers, one, getting data so they can see what to do easy, what to do hard, what might happen. And it's just a good way for us to kind of get some practice. And so for the last three years, I've either not been old enough to get on the show. I might have not gotten the call because of, um, well, who knows? <laughs> and so the best thing I could do is just go to different cities get some practice on the obstacles, and then move on. So over the past three years, I've gotten to test in the Northeast and Southeast regions for the last three years and the Las Vegas finals for the past two years. And I've had an, an enormous honor getting to get on stage two, stage three, stage one. It's been a blast. Okay, so for people who've seen the show, like me, but don't really understand the ins and outs, what are you testing? I mean, I know that, you know, they have to make sure it works and like you said, get GoPro, but are you, are, I mean, does stuff break? Have you guys had issues? Like, do, have you ever tested something and, and then it needed to be tested? It's never happened to me personally, but things have broken and it it's a rare, rare occasion. The guys who make the course is a company called ATS and they are safety priority number one. Mm -hmm. If there's ever been a problem, no one's gotten hurt. And if the worst does happen, they're always prepared to handle it. So in that regard, no worries there. That's great. All we're testing is to see how different body types, how different weights are going to respond to different obstacles. If something's too far away, they'll move it forward. If something's too close, they'll move it back. Uh -huh. Just to see what's too easy and what's too hard. Have you ever run a course and thought, oh, well, this is way too easy? Does that really happen? And then they change it? Honestly, it, some obstacles, it's all mental. It's all daunting. So by the end of it, you're like, okay, yeah, that was way too easy. <laughs> and in some courses, I mean, the the better you get, the more it's like, yeah, you can step this up a little bit. But 90% of the time, it's, wow, this is this is too much. And you said sometimes you were too young. How old do you have to be to be on the show? Well, last year was the first year that they allowed 19-year-olds to be on the show. That was a big deal for a lot of people, uh -huh. especially my training partner, who was one of the young bloods allowed on. Previously, the age was 21. So I figured the first time I applied, my birthday would be around the time that the show would air or by the time that they're accepting applications or looking for filming and stuff like that. So I was 20 years old. I applied and said, I'll be 21. Don't worry, coach. Put me in. <laughs> and that didn't happen. So that year, I ended up competing on the show um, Ultimate Beastmaster instead. And doing my contract with that, 
I was not allowed to compete on American Ninja Warrior, but I still sent in an application just to be safe. And so you and you're celebrating a birthday. You're going to be 25 at the end of this month. So heck yeah. <laughs> well, happy birthday in advance. <laughs> Um, there it is. Yep. So now I'm totally old enough to both rent a car and be on the show. When you audition for American Ninja Warrior, is it multi-step or after you're in the system? I mean, I'm, I'm just curious. How does it work? Is it on paper once they see you? What do you do? Okay. So here's how it goes. For everyone who's applying, you have to do two things. One, you have to fill out this huge questionnaire of what are your hobbies? What's your story? What are collections you have? What are your stats? All things that the producers can use to look back at your profile. And then the announcers can use during your run, like, oh, little known fact about this contestant, he's got a pug and gibbles or something like that. Uh, that's other stuff. But what really matters is the two to three minute long video you have to submit. In this video, you have to show a great camera presence and on camera energy. How do, well do you interview? What your story is? What skills you can do? You have to really wow the producers to get their attention to not only show that you can handle the show, but that you should be a story featured on the show. And once you do those two things, well, then you're in. I'm going to link up the video that you posted uh, of you. You posted a video of you getting this phone call. Tell us about what happened. How, I mean, you know, what was going through your mind? And they just, they called you at the gym? You never know when it's going to happen. Uh, in the ninja community, everybody's very tight. So I had heard that, oh, calls for Atlanta are going out. Calls for the Southeast are going out. And I'm waiting and I'm waiting. And the it's been year after year. You do the same thing like, oh, maybe this is my year. And for a long time, I had been waiting and thinking, you know what? If I don't get it this year, I might just retire, get to rock climbing and just kind of spit her out. But for whatever reason, I was just confident that this was my year. So conveniently enough, I just stepped into the bathroom and then my phone rings. I'm like, <laughs> no freaking way. As soon as I saw the number, it's 818. If you see 818, you are freaking in. I saw 818 and I was losing my mind. I ran out of the bathroom. I'm screaming, it's happening, it's happening. I'm trying to like compose myself before I answer the phone. And I take a deep breath. Hey, hi, this is Cole Scott. What's going on? And of course, it was the uh, casting producer, Peter, on the other side. And he's like, hey, Cole, how's it going? And I'm just, I want to be nice and cordial. But at the same time, I just want to cut to the chase. Like, yeah. Peter, tell me the news. Give me it. What's going on? And he finally said, he's like, well, you've been selected for the Southeast region. And uh, that was, I mean, that was the biggest drop I've ever heard. I mean, my poor coach was watching. He's the one filming and he had, it was crying. Just like, I think he's been waiting for this more than I have. So yeah. Who, who was that? I'm sorry. I missed that. So when I mentioned um, Jonathan Wyman, my coach from gymnastics, that's him. Uh. To this day, we work together. We coach ninja classes and gymnastics classes. And he's been by my side through the entire journey. I Absolutely wouldn't be where I am now without his connections and his guidance. So so that's the coach back in 2009, 2010 that you were referring to who was there when you got this that's call 10 years later? 10 years. We've been training together for well, 10 <laughs> years. Yeah. What a wonderful story. Oh, my gosh. No wonder he was crying. Oh, yeah. <sighs> oh, man. he When Eli got it, uh, my training partner, he didn't get to see this happen. So the fact that he was there for it, I think really was great for him. Yeah. Let's talk more about American Ninja Warrior in just a couple minutes, but let's focus, if we could, on, on your diabetes story, because you were diagnosed very young, 18 months. I'm not going to ask you what you remember, but you've, you've, grown, nothing. Yeah, you've grown up with this. You've lived with this your whole life, basically. When it came to Colt, the 15-year-old the who liked Spider-Man and wanted to do gymnastics and all that stuff, what did you do about diabetes at the time? I mean, let's just fast forward to that. What was your routine as a teenager? Right back to my conversation with Colt. But first, Diabetes Connections is brought to you by OneTouch. Have you ever tested your blood sugar with a meter and were unsure about the meaning of your result? Take the guesswork out of your numbers with the OneTouch Vario Flex meter. It uses color short technology to instantly show you when your or your loved one's blood sugar numbers are low, indicated by blue, in range, green, or high, red, so you can quickly get on with your life. You can also use the meter's built-in Bluetooth smart technology to seamlessly sync with the OneTouch Reveal mobile app, available now as a free download for Android devices on Google Play and Apple devices on the App Store. One touch because taking a step forward starts by seeing where you are. Now back to Colt, talking about how he and his parents handled the teen years. 
As a teenager, um, my parents told me that they raised me with this disease through ignorance. They took care of it the way they knew how to. And other than that, other than reaching out, we just treated it. Well, I mean, we never really gave it attention. If there was a problem, we'd fix it. A low blood sugar, a high blood sugar, fix it. And we just moved on. I, I never wasted any time blinking and thinking what more could be done or what isn't being done. I mean, you know, I took care of myself, but I never got hung up on the fact that I have a disease. So getting through high school, people just knew, oh, hey, you're diabetic. Well, there was like three of us in the high school that all had diabetes and we call ourselves the diabetic asses and ha ha, hee But we never really wore it on our chest. We never really made it who we were. And I didn't start doing so until, well, recently after I've gotten into this field. That's interesting because, you know, you were diagnosed at a time when there wasn't the online community, certainly. You know, your parents were not, as many of us are lucky enough to be now, well, for better or for worse, because there's a lot of bad information out there as well, you know, online and talking to people. And you said they did it out of ignorance. You mean they just kind of did what they needed to do? Pretty much. I mean, if it wasn't broken, don't fix it. And we mm. maintained pretty good A1Cs. We, you know, I wasn't losing any appendages. I wasn't blind. <laughs> and anytime new technology would come out, we would be interested in it. But mm. for the longest time, I kind of refused um, CGMs only for one, vanity, and two, discomfort. I just was afraid of it for the longest time. So when I was in high school, I just did my own thing. I just acted like any other kid. And I really think that that helped me socially, physically, and, and mentally, just a way to keep me from getting hung up on the fact that I might not be able to do certain things. Yeah. Well, it doesn't sound like your parents ever let it stop you, right? It was just part of the routine. Absolutely. I mean, of course, there's times, you know, every parent worries, every mother is going to, you know, look after their young boy and all this. <laughs> Anybody who hears this is going to know, like, well, I've got to take care of this and that. You do. But don't ever let it hold you back from being the person you could be. I think that I was very lucky to have parents that allowed me to do that. So in, when you were in the gym as a, a young person, as a tween and then a teen, what was your routine? You said no CGM. Were you on injections? Did you wear? I, I can't imagine you, you had a pump on while you were doing everything in the gym, but maybe. Well, no, I didn't. Um, my training partner, he did uh, once he got diagnosed around when he was 10 years old, when we were training, like we trained before he was diabetic. And so him being diagnosed just solidified the relationship. Wait, 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 all wait. For the techno wait, you were, a, you were a kid. So you're training with another kid for a couple of years. And then suddenly that kid's diagnosed. Yep. I trained with Eli for like four or five years before he was diagnosed. Wow. And then his, his parents talked to me. I talked to his parents, his parents talked to my parents and we just kind of supported each other. And now it's, it's just another thing. So that's funny. But I cut you off. You started to talk about the technology that he was interested in. Yeah, well, he uses uh, an Omnipod and a Dexcom, and he was all on that before I got caught up to him. For the longest time, I was old-fashioned. Um, just, you know, prick my finger, test my blood, MDI throughout the day. The greatest resource I had for keeping just how did I feel. And I was pretty good at recognizing, well, I feel kind of low, I should check. I feel kind of high, I should check. And that may not have been the safest thing, but it worked for me for a while. And so now with this new technology I'm a part of, it's, it's even easier. So what CGM do you use and how do you wear it, especially with all the activity that you do? I use a Dexcom G6. I've got it on my stomach and it's wrapped up in a stay put medical patch. For the longest time, I was worried. I had a G5. I tried it before and I had it on my back and I said, forget this. I'm out. I'm never going to do it again. <laughs> Two years later, I was invited to the Children with Diabetes Friends for Life conference. And one of the attendants there, one of the friends there told me, get over it. Like, huh. you can do this. It's a way of the future. You just got to get over it. She talked. She was real talk. She told me, hey, man, you're fine. You're not too skinny. You can do this. And the day at home, I put G6 on. And that was it. Oh, that's great. So just to be clear, because I mean, my son plays tons of sports with it and it's not an issue, but if people are curious, you've got it on your stomach and when you're doing the activity, the, the stay put, I know we've, there's lots of different overlay patches that you can use, um, but you don't really have any issue with it coming off? No, actually, um, when I first had my G6, the one time I had a problem was I was rock climbing and I had my harness on and I took a fall and when my harness caught me, it ripped the patch off. Ooh. And this led to a sensor failure. Yeah, it didn't really feel all that great. This led to a sensor failure, so I started looking for, like, different solutions to fix this. 
I got in touch with Stay Put. I tried on the patch, and ever since then, I've yet to have any issue with my patches falling out due to my activity or any skill I throw at it. It stays put. So we're we're good to go on that. That's awesome. Era. Yeah, and I don't want to do a commercial for Stay Put, but I, I have actually mentioned them before because we always have issues in the summer, and that's the one thing that works for us too. So, Colt, you and I can get together. We can call Mike from Stay Put, and we'll put a package together. We'll be calling him and letting him know. That'll be great. <laughs> hey, now we're cooking. <laughs> Totally kidding. It's all good. So, you know, you mentioned the story that you have to tell for American Ninja Warrior. And we've seen these shows, you know, they love their stories. Um, and I'm sure you've talked all to right. them and they know that you have type one. You do not tell your story in a way that makes it seem, at least to me, you know, he has to overcome. And, you know, here's Colt Scott. He's, you know, has overcome a, a chronic condition to flourish or whatever they would say. How do they present it? Do you have any yeah, idea how they're going to talk about you? More than likely, they're probably going to mention something to that nature. But the thing is, I'm not the first diabetic to be featured on the show. My training partner was on it. Kyle Cochran was on it. There was another guy after him. But the difference is that they are all diabetics, whereas I am the diabetic. Oh. Okay, so (laughs) so they may have overcome this, this, oh, my life is plagued by this, this, this disease, this condition I've got. But the cross you bear can either make you stronger or weaker, and that's up to you. And I think that I've been blessed to have been diagnosed so early on that I had no choice. When I was young, if I refused to take care of my blood sugar, if my parents refused to take care of my blood sugar, well, that's it. So I had to sink or swim, and that lifestyle has just followed me up until now. American Ninja Warrior, metaphorically, is just another obstacle to overcome, and I don't see any reason why I can't. That's the story they're going to post. That's the one I applied with. Oh, that's a great story. Um, so back to the the testing and American Ninja Warrior and everything. I am amazed when the, the details that I'm reading about this. What's basically well, I don't want to get a hell of a, Let me ask you. When we're talking about American Ninja Warrior, so you've been testing the course for several years. You have been invited to the show, but what are you invited to? Is it the show that we see? Is it another additional tryout? For, pardon my ignorance. I'm just trying to figure out what's going on in Atlanta. Oh, you mean when I'm testing or yeah. when? No, no, no. The, what's the, coming this, up this, this month, right? What happens? That overnight craziness you were writing about. So this is the show. Testing usually takes place. It's the same course. It's the same cities. You know, they just get volunteers who aren't competing to test the course and try things out. And then once the sun goes down, they film. And they film all throughout the night until the sun comes up. And this time, I'm actually going to be on the other side of the camera. Why do they tape overnight? That just seems like cruel and unusual punishment for the contestants. It really is stunning, like, how much goes into the production of it. And Mm -hmm. it's amazing because you have to control the lighting. Videography and photography is all about lighting. So at night, there's no cloud coverage they have to wait for. The sun doesn't move. The lighting can all be the same. And staying up, I mean, yeah, it's torturous. Some ninjas will take a week off work and Mm. stay up all night, sleep during the day just to be acclimated to those conditions, which I plan on doing. Mm. But it's just a lot easier to control the surroundings when it's at night rather than during the day. I think that's fascinating. Any kind of behind-the-scenes production, the way they do these shows, is unbelievable. You know, there's so much waiting around that we don't see. There's so much stuff going on. Uh, But you have the advantage of having been part of this community for a long time. So after, I assume after you tested, oh, you've, yeah. you've watched this, you've been part of this, so you know the drill. Well, yeah, I mean, I've, I've really gotten the, the handle of it. Um, I've seen things on the camera side and the audience side that I'm familiar on both. With In the ninja community, the athletes themselves, I've been accepted as a ninja. Hmm. And everybody who's you know gone to competitions and this or that is called a ninja. And for the longest time, I never really felt like I was because I haven't actually competed. Some people will be like, well, I've never seen you on the show. You're not a ninja. And that's, that kind of cuts deep mm-hmm. for someone who's devoted so much time to, you know, doing the show. So people on camera side have gotten to know me. People on, you know, the competitor side have gotten to know me. And now I'm grateful that the audience is going to get to know. Me. I know I'm going to get questions about this. Um, so let me ask you straight up. How do you eat before a competition, does anything change? Do you have anything that you do in terms of diet, you know, for athletics and diet together with diabetes? Well, for better or worse, Ninja Warrior is kind of like rock climbing in the sense that your strength to weight ratio needs to be at its max, mm-hmm. meaning you have to be as light as you can 
while being as strong as you can. So most ninjas will enter a calorie deficit where they'll eat fewer calories than necessary in order to cut weight. And that at first can be pretty dangerous for a diabetic, but if you keep monitoring your trends, know what you're going to eat, plan out your calories and keep things to a T, then you can be really successful with it. And I've been able to cut some weight in time for the show, but the week prior to filming or testing, I'll usually eat more than what's necessary. I'll kind of try and put back on some weight just in case I do experience a low on set or if we can't get the food. And that way my glycogen store is all the way up. But to be clear, because I am a mom, you know, we want to be careful with kids mm-hmm. and athletics. You can't do any of that without somebody helping you out. You know, somebody who knows what they're doing. You know, if a teenager wants to do something like this, what would your advice be for somebody who's trying to make a weight or, you know, who has type one and either wants to gain or lose weight for an athletic purpose? That's a good question. Um, I would probably say start by cutting out simple sugar. Mm-hmm. Simple sugar is anything like candy or sweets, even sweeteners in your coffees or creamers or regular soda, stuff like that. I think you probably should need to begin with. Cut that out and that's going to make a big difference. When you have these changes, you're going to have to start noticing your trends. If you're more active, uh, you might have to cut back on your basil. If You might have to cut back on your bolus as well just to keep yourself in that good range. You might experience some changes once your diet does, but it's those things that you have to take slow steps into. Overall, cut out sugar first and stick to an almost paleo diet. Paleo being, you know, meats, grains, stuff like that, whole foods. But you don't do super low carb or anything like that? Nothing dangerous, no. I mean, your body needs carbohydrates, so of course I'm going to have some of those. Obviously, you're not a nutritionist. I'm not a nutritionist, but I just like to ask about those things. Whenever we have somebody who's really succeeded with athletics, I always get questions about ask about their food, ask, you know, what they do, ask about their routine that way. So I appreciate you sharing that. Right, right. Did you say you wear an insulin pump? I'm sorry, I missed that. I do not. I'm fully MDI. Okay. So you're MDI with the CGM. Do you find that during Mm -hmm. competitions, you have to change your basal because of adrenaline, things like that? It's interesting that you mentioned that. Um, I usually take the same amount of long-acting insulin in the mornings. And really, the only problem that I have with the show is that staying up late does kind of affect when I need to take that. No, I forgot I need to take that because it'll Mm -hmm. just fluctuate up and down. But as adrenaline kicks in, it definitely does kick up. Like the course will maybe last three minutes, five minutes maximum. And so there's not much change really going on with your blood sugar until you are done. Like my blood blood sugar will spike. Sure. But I'll be off the course by the time I need to correct it. Right. You mentioned you went to Friends for Life. You have become someone who I'm sure at your home gym as well is a role model for kids. I don't know if you expected that, but what's that like? Is it fun? It's, I don't know how to put it into words. It, it's not something that I ever expected to walk into, but now that I'm here, if, if that is what it is, that I am glad to be there. I want to be there for any kid who has ever had doubt to stand up and say that, yes, you can. Just to be a voice that is cool. You know, it's hard to find a cool role model. It's always, hey, I'm a skippy. I've got good budget. You got to have somebody who you want to be, you want to be like, you can aspire to be like. And I hope that that's, you know, been accomplished. There's a kid um, who trains at a gym a couple states over. His parents have contacted us. He's been to competitions we've been at. And he looks up to my training partner and I so much. Every time we see him at a competition, we watch his runs, he watches us, and he's just thrilled to have two guys like us be in his corner. And yeah. every time we get to see him, it really does put a smile on my face. Well, you know, and you know my story. I'm not going to rehash it, but, you know, I, I, I told it recently <laughs> on the show and I put it out there. My son was in such a bad way. He just had a lousy night. I mean, he wasn't, he hadn't changed his routine. He wasn't down in the dumps about diabetes, but right before we met you, he had had such a bad night. And just being with you and the other guys from Bolas and Barbells, and, you know, Benny is not a competitive weightlifter, but he had just started this year working with a trainer, and he really enjoys it. And I think just being in the same air, you know, and just knowing that, hey, these guys all have diabetes, they're all fun, you know, it's, oh, yeah, my mom's here too, she's embarrassing. But, you know, just being (laughs) with you and seeing that it was okay, made a a really big difference for him. So I appreciate you doing stuff like that. I think it's fantastic. And I hope that you continue to have fun with it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And it it was great meeting him. And I'm so happy that 
that we were able just to meet him and to have any effect on his attitude towards the whole thing. I, it really means a lot. That's great. All right. So I have to ask you, at the very beginning of this, you mentioned that you were really into comic books and Spider-Man as a teenager. Yes. So now that you're in this in gymnastics and how what do you I mean Tom Holland as Spider-Man this has got to be somebody that you watch do you watch these movies differently than the rest of us do you watch the moves and think ah, that's his double Okay I'll go into the theater and watch the movie just for the whimsy of it but on further review I'm like <laughs> oh yeah, I know that's done man I've seen how yeah I know who that is oh that's Damian Walters right there you see that I knew it. Damian Walters you are <laughs> like so we'll watch it and be like okay we could do that we, there, we even made a short film Eli, me, and his uh, girlfriend, who is also training to be a stunt woman, we made a short film where we took different stunts we saw from these movies and put them all together on a low budget film, and voila, I mean, it was fantastic. We <laughs> love seeing movies like this just for the motivation. Oh, does it motivate you to try it for real? Oh, absolutely, because we've got access to the gym, so we'll just set up, you know, rickety pads. Like, how high do you think this mat is? Is that the height of a car? Okay, let's <laughs> side flip that. Oh, you side flipped it. Two weeks later, we're side flipping over a over a tiny car and filming it. So <laughs> we're on our way. Well, that's a great job to go play in the gym. I mean, obviously, it's more than that. But do you ever think this is what I'm doing? I mean, I it's it's work, man. It's the work of passion. Like the times that I'm in the gym training, I don't consider it work. That's just who I am. It's what I love to do. It's my stress relief. I work in a high school during the day as an assistant. I work at a climbing gear store, and then I work at the gym as a coach. So all of these things oh, wow. allow me to live the life that I really want to live. And I, right now, I think I'm that. I think I'm living my best life. Wow. I didn't realize that. You are busy. When you uh, <laughs> oof, when you said you're an assistant, you work in a high school? Yeah. My mom has a long career in the special ed, uh, in the special ed department at a local county. And so she put in a lot of time there, and she... I've worked my way into being a special ed instructional assistant at a high school classroom. And, you know, I'm, I enjoy the work. I think I'm good at it. And it may lead to a full-time career if I ever have to retire from Ninja. But for now, those three jobs combined pay the bills. And I mean, it's, it's satisfying work. That is, that's wonderful. Wow. You're a very busy person. So when you compete, Will we see that soon? Are you going to be under all sorts of embargoes? Can, you know, wh- when will we find out what happened and be able to see it? Do you think? I won't be able to say a thing <laughs> other than I've done the show. Not a thing. Um, they've released the air date for the Los Angeles episode, which is the first uh, first session filming. They've actually probably started filming their finals course right now. So. That's going on now. They said that's going to air at the end of May. So my episode qualifier will probably be the week after that. This is so hard, keeping your mouth shut. And then all the people who watch, does everybody sign a cool. waiver? I mean, that must be crazy because I know oh, people yeah. watch, right? Oh, yeah. They're super strict on um, non-disclosure agreements, this and that. When I was on Beastmaster, the episode I was in didn't air for a whole year oh. after they had filmed. So. The secrecy I was on, like, I don't think I even told my parents what had happened until it aired. So wow. kind of used to the whole, the whole stick. That's great. It really is wild, though, to think about. So we'll be stalking you on Instagram and elsewhere, but I'm sure you will not break the embargo. I mean, you know, that's just crazy. I will not break the embargo, <laughs> but I may throw out some teasers. Like, you'll see a <laughs> shot of my foot over water or something. I don't know, like, oh, what happened here? Like, <laughs> Sneak in a CGM shot, and we'll... uh we no, know yes, absolutely. <laughs> on the course. That's pretty funny. You had said that you're, you know, you're kind of newer to the diabetes online community, even though you're, you know, you've had type one since you were a baby. How did you find the, the community? And, you know, is it bullets and barbells that was your entree to it? Well, like I said, my training and partner and I, we never talk about it. We rarely bring diabetes up. We'll be yeah. like, oh, is your diabetes low? Oh, you better fix that. And <laughs> ta-da, we do. We've had each other's backs through lows and highs. We've always, you know, cared for each other. Each of us knows how to use a glucagon and we just, you know, watch each other's back. And that's it. Like we rarely communicate with other diabetics. So the way I got into the diabetes community is that I posted my audition video for Ultimate Beastmaster and it just blew up. Like it went, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it it reached a lot of people. 
So someone had commented on it that there's this thing called uh, Children with Diabetes, Friends for Life. You should go check it out. Mm -hmm. I messaged one of them, and they were like, absolutely. You got to come down here. That would be great. And that was my first event besides, you know, local JDRF walks and stuff like that. And from then on, it's just been an explosion of meeting new people. Uh, I went to Bullets and Barbells after meeting Rodney Miller at CWD. I met you on my way to Bullets and Barbells. And so it's just gone on and on and on. And it's crazy to be part of this new community after I've been in the Ninja one for so long. I know everyone's name there. And now I'm walking into this new one. I've got no idea who <laughs> anyone is. Who I talked to someone the other day. I was like, yeah, um, Gary Schneider, do you know him? The writer of the book? And I was like, yes, I know who you're Think talking like about. Think like a pancreas. Like, That's very funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I even mentioned the title and they're like, you don't have, I know who you're talking about, freaking noob. <laughs> They but no, it's, yeah, it's a great new community to be a part of. I'm, I'm loving it. Well, we're thrilled that you have, you know, jumped in because, you know, people with diabetes, there's, there's no obligation for anybody to be a part of the community and be a role model and talk to kids and, you know, do everything that you're doing. So I'm glad you're enjoying it because, you know, you are seeing the benefit because it is a struggle and it's it's great to live a regular life with type one. You know, I think that if Benny wants to grow up and work in an office and handle his type one and be successful, fantastic. But you know what you're doing is so fun and so out there and so physical that to see it and to see you doing it so well is kind of a it's aspirational for the kids it's kind of a relief for the parents so i don't know if anyone has expressed that to you yet yeah but man it is just like wow look he's it's okay the parents he's i love okay. talking to it's the parents i love talking to more than anybody else i mean i love talking to the kids i'll take pictures and and mm. you know sign autographs do whatever i can but i see my mom and dad in the face of every parent that i've met and i more for them wish that they had had someone like me to say, your son or daughter is going to be capable of greatness. You just have to stick with them and they're going to be okay. I wish I could go back and say that to my mom and dad because they have done so much for me to bring me where I am now. What a great thought. Are they oh, going to be? Man, hold on. Oh, I... <laughs> Are they going to be at the American Ninja Warrior course? Absolutely. They're going to be on my sidelines. I love it. If I was your mom, though, I couldn't watch. I'd be the whole time, like, through my fingers going, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, dude, if you thought my coach freaked out when he saw me get the call, my poor mom. Oh, oh, oh man. <laughs> freaked. Freaked out. <laughs> That's great. Well, Colt, thank you so much for joining uh, me. We are all rooting for you. This is so exciting. I'm thrilled that you're getting this opportunity, and I can't wait to see how it goes, when you can tell us, and when we can see it. And then, you know, who knows what's next? Thank you so much. Not a problem, Stacey. Thank you so much for having me on the show once again. I'm new to this diabetes community. Like, I've just started tiptoeing into it. I'm still knowing names and stuff, and everybody has mentioned, you know, Stacey Sims, she's got this great podcast, so... The honor is all mine to be here. Thank you again for having me. Amazing stuff you're doing, and I cannot wait to let you guys know how it goes. You're listening to Diabetes Connections with Stacey Sims. More information on American Ninja Warrior, on Colt's appearance, anything we can tell you. That isn't embargoed, you know, before he makes it on TV, because as you've known with previous guests who do reality shows and game shows and athletic shows and things like that, we often have to wait and see after the taping. So hopefully this one we won't have to wait for too long. But we appreciate Colt making time, and I will keep you posted. Just go to diabetes-connections.com, or of course, check out the show notes. Always, every episode has show notes that go along with it on whatever podcast app you are listening to to help give you more information and to help give you some links. Speaking of information and links, our community connection this week is about a product I have told you about in the past and is making its way to market. Community Connection is brought to you by Tandem Diabetes Care, makers of the T-Slim X2 insulin pump. Last summer, we brought you the story of the glucose necklace. It's had a couple of different names, but this is a, you may have seen it online. It looks like a very colorful necklace with a medallion on it, and it has a glucose gel inside. This was created by Chris Maynard, who is a former firefighter and first responder. He lives with type one and he wanted something that he didn't have to carry in his pocket that he would always have with him, something to make it easy. And I got an email from Chris and he said, Hey, Stacy, do you want to offer your listeners a free medical alert necklace? And I said, 
Sure thing, Chris. Tell me more about it. So basically, they have entered their first testing phase. Uh, they are looking for people who want to be part of the testing. The second round will take place in April. They're really just looking for feedback on how to improve the necklace. So you can sign up now. You can go to glucoserevival.com. Of course, I will put that link in the show notes as well. He says that the solution in the now called Thrive Medical Alert Necklace contains the same solution EMTs use for low blood sugar. And apparently, in the testing that they're doing, this actually has a faster absorption rate. So um, I will link up in the show notes uh, the instructional video about the testing, more information about the necklace, and um, you know any information about when you'll be able to buy it. But you can certainly sign up now to be a tester. Uh, we have signed up as of this taping. I haven't received the necklace yet. I do expect to get it probably in the next week or so, and we'll check it out and let you know what Benny thinks of it. It's always really exciting to be part of something new. And I, I think this story is really great because Chris, as a first responder, really sees the need for it. And as a person with type one, you know, he's been able to design what is really needed for the community. So if you're one of the testers, let me know how it goes. Love to hear from you. Time for Tell Me Something Good. I love hearing from you. Give me your good news stories. We want to share them. Tell Me Something Good is brought to you by Real Good Foods. And you know we like to try new things around here. Benny is always up for eating something new, trying things and going for a taste test. I noticed Real Good Foods during Diabetes Awareness Month back in November, and I was really excited to partner with them. So before we did, of course, we tried all the food. And Benny started with the Supreme Pizza, which has since become his favorite, but I'm jumping ahead. This is like a personal size pan pizza, a lot of toppings, you know, veggies and things like that. And I asked him to save me a bite. Well, he liked it so much that he forgot to save me any. Thanks a lot, kid. Well, since then, we've tried so many of their products. I mean, I've eaten everything. And we love that the pizza is eight carbs. It's really easy to dose for. I mean, it's eight carbs. But it's also delicious. The poppers are great. The enchiladas in particular, Benny likes. And it's on the grocery store freezer. And that makes it really easy. Find out more at diabetes-connections.com and click on the Real Good Foods logo. I love it when something starts out with permission to brag. Well, yeah, that's exactly what this segment is all about. So Anne wrote in, permission to brag. Usually I share about how my daughter is kicking butt in color guard, but she's actually an extremely talented violist. Finger sticks help toughen the fingers for string instruments. She is Camp Sweeney's, in parentheses, she wrote for Camp Sweeney, awesome decamp. She is Camp Sweeney's Camper of the Week due to being accepted at the University of North Texas's prestigious College of Music. And let me say again, I am not sure Sydney would have the intense drive she does if it wasn't for making dang sure T1D is not what defines her. She teaches me how to thrive every day. Anne and Sydney, congratulations. That is a great message. That is exactly what Tell Me Something Good is all about. Send me your accomplishments, your milestones, anything that's good, because, you know, so much about diabetes is not. So I love this segment. It helps me, you know, really find something positive to think about. It makes me smile every time I read one. You can post in the Facebook group on the Diabetes Connections page when I put up the Tell Me Something Good, uh, you know, asking for, for comments, or just email me, Stacy at diabetes-connections.com. Okay, quick correction before I let you go. Yeah, this is kind of embarrassing. So, you know, last week when I said it was my 21st wedding anniversary, well, I have been married for 21 years, but I was a little ahead of myself because my anniversary is this week. I am going to chalk it up to, I don't know, what would you say? Busy schedule, kids going in every different direction appreciating my husband, but maybe not looking at the calendar too closely. So I didn't forget, but I did mess up the date. Oh my goodness. How embarrassing. But happy anniversary, sweetie. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, he's such a great guy anyway. Thank you as always for you for listening each and every week for putting up with some of this nonsense and for sending in your great stories for sharing the show like so many of you have done. I appreciate it so much. And if you haven't done that yet, tell a friend, tell somebody touched by type one. 
all about Diabetes Connections and help me share their stories, help me share more stories. Let's get the word out. Thank you to my editor, John Buchanan from Audio Editing Solutions. I am Stacey Sims, and I'll see you back here next week. Diabetes Connections is a production of Stacey Sims Media. All rights reserved, all wrongs avenged.